In this tutorial, we'll be creating this liquid glass animation based off the new iOS 26 update. Plus, stick around and I'll tell you how to get your hands on these free liquid glass components in Figma. Studio Shepherd. In this tutorial, we're going to be recreating the tab component that Apple uses in Photos. And we're going to be building this on top of a background image so that we can see the glass effect behind it. So to start, select the type tool and we're going to add the text years, which is going to be our first menu item. And you can see I've got my text set to SF Pro, semi bold, size 14. Now click Shift A to create an auto layout. I've got my padding set to 10 on the sides and the top. And I'm going to rename this layer menu item 1. Now create two copies of this. So we've got a total of three. And just reflecting that in our layer names. Now select all of your menu items. Right click and we're going to go add auto layer. And so I'm going to change this frame to be called container. And so selecting our container, I'm going to change the width to 300. And I'm going to give a padding of five on the sides and the top. Now selecting each of your menu items, we're now going to change the width to fill container. And we can also rename these now, so I'm going to call this one months and all. Now select your container again, and we're going to give it a fill. We're going to have this set to white at just 2% opacity. We're also going to give it a stroke, and we're going to have this as a linear gradient, adding three stops. Each stop is going to be white and the top and bottom stops are going to be 0%. Now we're also going to adjust the points of our gradient. So the first point on the bottom left and then the end point at the top right. Now we're also going to give it a corner radius. So I'm going to have this set to 60 so they're nice and round. And now we're going to apply some effects. So we're going to add a new effect and we're going to select inner shadow. We're going to have the Y set to 2 and the blue set to 8. Change the color to white and have this set to 40%. So now we've got this nice highlight at the top of our container. And so we're also going to give it another effect in a shadow. This time we're going to have Y set to negative 2 and the blue set to 6. And keeping the color at black but at just 20% opacity. And so now we've got this subtle shadow happening at the bottom of our container. So next we want to create this distortion effect that applies to the image beneath it. So to do this we're going to select the rectangle tool, draw a rectangle over your container like this. We're going to change the fill to white and we're going to give it an effect. This time we're going to give it texture, have the size set to 80 and the radius set to 8. And we're going to give it another texture and this time we're going to select background blue and we're going to leave the blue at 4. So now we can change the opacity of our fill down to 2% so you can see through it and as you can see we now have this glass looking distortion effect. And so we can rename this layer to say liquid texture. So now we want to add this layer within our container. So we're going to drag it into our container and then we're going to make sure it's sitting at the bottom. 
and now we want to come over to position and we're going to select ignore auto layer and so now we can reposition it in the center of our container and if we select our container and we select clip content and we also come into these settings here and change the canvas stacking to first on top and as you can see I've actually got it sitting under this menu item and so I'm just going to drag that out oh this can be a little bit fiddly there we go and now when we drag our container around we've got this glass effect being applied to it and so now we want to create our active indicator so we know which tab that we're on so select the rectangle tool we're going to draw a rectangle and then we can select our menu item and copy these values here so our width and our height and then go back to our rectangle I'm going to paste in our width and change the height to 37. Now I'm going to round off the corners, change the fill to white and the opacity to 30%. Now we can rename this layer to Active Indicator. Now we want to give it the same glass texture that we did for the container. So following the same steps, select the rectangle. We're going to draw this over our shape. Change the fill to white. And we're going to add in the effects texture at 80. And the radius this time at 8. And we're also going to give it a background blur. And we're going to have a blur set to 4. Now we can change the opacity to 2%. So we've got something that looks like this. I'm going to rename this to Liquid Texture 2. Now selecting your active indicator, I'm going to right click and we're going to go Frame Selection and call this layer Active Indicator Container. And now we can drag in our new liquid texture I'm going to have that set to the bottom of our active indicator container and then selecting the container layer we're going to go clip content and we're also going to round off these corners so you should get this subtle distortion effect happening behind the shape so now we're going to add this into our container so drag this into the container right down to the bottom but above the liquid texture so now with our active indicator container selected we are going to ignore the auto layout and we're going to position this on the right and as you can see it's just jumped to the top so we just need to pull that back down so it's behind our text now that we've created our tab component we're now going to prototype it to create this animation. So with your container layer selected we are going to go up and go create component and we're going to add a variant and we're going to call the variant months in the property tab. So we can do the same for the top one so I'm going to call this one years so this is just indicating which menu item we have selected. So in this next layer we're going to select our active indicator and I'm going to change the alignment to center and then if we select this layer I'm going to add another variation and again selecting if we go into layers here selecting the active indicator I'm going to bump it to the right and then we just need to pull it in so it aligns with our menu item so once you've done all of those steps, we can then jump over to prototype. So here we're going to prototype each of these buttons. So if we select this menu item and we're going to drag an arrow out to this tab here 
as when you click on months, we want the active indicator to scroll behind it. And so here I've got on click change to the months tab. I've got the animation set to smart animate, the curve set to custom spring and the stiffness set to 200. So now we can repeat these steps for each of the buttons. So once you have prototyped your component, we can come back to our image, paste our component, and I'm going to center it. And then selecting our layer, we can go up and click this play button, which is going to load our prototype. And as you can see, when we click each of our menu items, it's going to create this liquid animation behind it. And that's how to create this liquid glass animation in Figma. This component and more are now available for free in my Figma template. I'll leave the link in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest design tips. I'll see you in the next video.